Hey guys, welcome to the first DeFi Mafia podcast, our first ever. Um, here to discuss all things crypto related. Um, you know, we're just going to be kind of shooting the shit, hanging out. You know, we're we're figuring it out. This is our first go here, so uh, a little bit of a rough draft, but things will get more structured as we go. Um, but um, if you've been following our Twitter at Mafia underscore DeFi, you know that. We've been covering the you know latest trends with L1s, whether that be Phantom or or Near or Avalanche and the like the last few months. So um gonna be delving deeper into that and uh got some other nice topics today. So uh anyways, uh I'm Dylan or DeFi Don. You might just see me as on Twitter. David uh, Doxed. Gills Doxed. I, I used to have my picture on Twitter, so I'm only doxed to the new followers, which is most of them. Uh so hello. And then we have the McDonald's employee platypus who does not want to dox himself. <laughs> Michael. Yeah. Mike. Michael. My mom called <laughs> Okay. And all right. What are we talking about first? All right. Um, all right. Uh, so, all right. L1s. We all know everyone's been, you know, rotating to their, uh, you know, new favorite EVM, Flavor of the Week. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I've actually been having some fun doing it. Um, and, uh, definitely been a shit ton of opportunities. So, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of, a lot of different good ones, excuse me. And, uh, particularly Phantom lately has been popping off to, uh, to the extreme. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely cover that. But anyways, just brief thoughts, David. Yeah. You've been like, okay, we have like a group chat and Dylan likes to send me 17 different Phantom plays every single day of like, yo bro, look at this, look at this new farm that's on fan of it's 700 million percent apr hop on it and i'm like okay and then, then like two hours he's like yeah yeah i cashed out i'm on the next one already we're on to whatever we're on to credit or scream or cream or whatever so yeah that the phantom eco is definitely popping off i don't i don't know about you i think it's like its own isolated thing honestly because we talk about it but like i think a lot of people don't pay attention to the phantom eco i don't i don't know what do you think about that yeah, I think it's kind of um, the the almost like the brand or the uh, result of what's happened has been basically it's become the degenerate DeFi play, uh, the de- degen DeFi chain, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so it's got all the the juicy yields and all the cool plays. And to be honest, uh, in some somebody else in our group mentioned, like it's become a much more robust ecosystem for DeFi than uh, Avalanche actually and uh, no dis- disrespect to Avalanche. That's, dude that's the funny thing because I would have thought that especially with where things were like three months ago that like Phantom versus Avalanche like F- Avalanche's ecosystem was popping off so obviously the coin was you know ripping itself I thought it was going to grow a lot more like, Avalanche hasn't grown that much in terms of its ego uh, like I don't really know like what or the innovation. Top- yeah, I mean, I, I think behind the scenes they're working a lot of stuff, but like, yeah, Phantom has so many things popping up constantly. Whereas AVAC, I'm not saying that Avalanche doesn't, obviously it does, but I think relatively, Phantom has a much more vibrant ecosystem right now. It's kind of the feel I get. Yeah, a hundred percent. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just just wanted to touch on real quick. Um. Yeah. Like I I've been digging into it. And it's not something that I've been um. The most heavily exposed to or not something that was as entrenched in as i would like um but i've been looking at it for about five to six weeks now and uh you know the guys know i i showed them uh, lqdr and spirit and identified or in mid early december that that was the convex curve style play uh spirit going within uh in spirit model where they uh you know people lock their tokens to vote and then guy liquidity to their the curve style thing their... sorry yeah but uh uh versus um something like uh, x sushi or in this case x boo x joe which um ha- have not proven to be as successful models so um that quickly caught a bid so to speak or uh the really the curve narrative became such a uh, powerful thing basically outside the l1 wars that was the most hot narrative going on in crypto and as a result the uh, lqdr spirit plays rose a ton but then after that 
we really saw the ecosystem pop off in a huge way uh, with the Danny Andre teaser launch of their new, you know, VE33 curve or uh, coin, excuse me, uh, which will be getting airdropped to the top 20 protocols on the Phantom ecosystem. So after that really kind of hit the scene and became more obvious to the, the crypt, crypto Twitter, which was really just early January, maybe January 6th to January 10th. Uh, that's really when you saw a lot of the other plays start to get into. Yeah. Greg, did you want to add something? Yeah, dude. I mean, I think he made a pretty good point about Phantom. Like, they have so much more shit going on on their chain. But mm. it's interesting. Like, that whole kind of when everything was popping off and AVAX was kind of like everyone was like going off on the timeline. There wasn't really that much stuff actually like innovative being built there. Like, it was mainly own forks and safe moon Ponzi forks. And, like, yeah, like, all this money was flowing on there, but it's, like, what was actually being built? And outside of a few Zaba launchpad coins that, you know, did okay. I mean, Kraft got wrecked. Uh, Cross doing okay. It's recovering a little bit. Like, what actually has been new? And PTP has been the one thing that recently, we're like, okay, well, now AVAX is starting to actually get some decent stuff, but it's, like, Fan has been building this stuff in the background. They're finally starting to get that attention. So it's interesting for sure how much marketing yeah. like CT plays a role in that whole kind of like what's actually popping off, you know? We, we were talking about this yesterday, right? Like it was like, because we we're talking about DFK, DeFi Kingdoms going over to uh, Avalanche. And I was like, are they going to be the biggest project on Avalanche when they go there? And I was like, what are the big projects? Like obviously you have time, which we'll get into later of... It's kind of been dying. Uh, and then uh, you obviously have like some gaming stuff like Krabata and, and Craft, but I don't think any of those are really popped off. Um, and then you just have like what, like a Dex, like Trader Joe, but you know, everybody has Dexes. There's not like major stuff. And Pangolin, on the OG Dex is really take to that. Yeah, no one even word. talks about Pangolin. Shit the bet, um, to be honest. And, and, and you know what's also sad is DeFi Kingdoms. There's a DFK avalanche pool on Avalanche, which is on Pangolin, but nobody even uses it. I didn't like, even know that existed. <laughs> dude, it, that's if you want to, you know, like Luigi's tease, Luigi being the head of DeFi on Avalanche, has teased um, a better airdrop for the Crystal Veil. Uh, and it's if you bridge your jewel pool to Avalanche. And that's what he's referring to is the, mm -hmm. the Avalanche jewel pool on Pangolin, but it's like, uh, point being, even that wasn't an, enough of a catalyst to bring volume over there. But I, I, I think Mike nailed it on the head with everything he said. There wasn't a lot of good innovation. And actually, when you bring up time, you know, to be frank, that's actually, besides the Coinbase withdrawals to the C-Chain, that's what really catalyzed Avalanche's That was the first growth. big thing. And I remember back in August... Nobody cares uh, about time. A friend of ours was like, yo, you guys should hop on time. Especially because because I was in Ohm and he was like, oh, have you heard about time? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And and that was like the first thing that made me bridge over to Avalanche in the first place. And I think a lot of people too. Same here. And then you had like Ohm Fork season pop off and a lot of people moved to Avalanche. But since then, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not shit on Avalanche. I like Avalanche a lot. I'm bullish on their future. But as far as like the last few months ecosystem – we don't really talk that much about Phantom, but there's just so much more happening on Phantom compared to Avalanche. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that last point, Mike touched on this, but really, you know, like, yeah, like, well, you know, <laughs> the last three months, all we saw was copycats, forks, um, um fork, safe moon crap, whatever. On Avalanche, you know, Spirit was quietly rebuilding their tokenomics and hard, you know, head down, hard at work, and LQDR was building a monster in the shadows, you know? uh straight up that's how I, lqdr you know who who would have expected a convex of you know one of these you know alt l1s you know what i mean like that was a that's, great idea okay. that's a good question right okay so right now the curve convex model has worked great on eth obviously with the originals and then you have like spirit uh uh sorry what lqdr and then now it seems like everybody's trying to do that how long do you think that wave lasts, like, that it keeps working? Like, on a uh, little alpha drop uh, on Solana, if anybody wants to buy a Solana eco, which, you know, do at your own risk, uh, there's Sunny and Sabre. Sabre being, like, the curve equivalent, Sunny being the convex. And if you look at the market cap, I mean, it, Sunny 
completely popped off. I forget what the market cap is right now, but it was like $5 million when I looked at it the other day. Um, and it literally went up like 200% in a day because I think a lot of people realize, oh, this is like the next play over on Solana. I don't know how long this will last. I think, I think it'll last so long as like, there's at least one solid player in each ecosystem, right? I think when it doesn't last is when it's like, oh, this is the third convex on Phantom, right? That's when it probably doesn't work anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't know. that's not something that can get too oversaturated and be successful. I was gonna say, Mike, actually, it would be a good time. Would you mind pulling up the platypus chart? Yeah. Um, that because actually this kind of gets on this discussion of, and I was gonna say. Does this trade, you know, we, we've seen in crypto that the trades get shorter each time, right? You know, we'll, and we might get into that, we might get into that to, in just a bit, but the L1s where, you know, at AVEX season lasted three to three months, two, three months, you know, Phantom season feels like it maybe it's two, a couple weeks a month, you know, near season, whatever. It's getting shorter. It's getting shorter each time. And no, that immediate. should be true for Curve and Convex as well. The immediate question is how soon until there is a, phantom fork of platypus we need so, to get on that when that happens yeah because yeah because spirit really just adapted them they weren't exact they're not a curve fork in that regard you know what i mean uh we should probably explain what platypus is actually in case people don't know yet um a little it's very i mean when i read and heard about the ponzi nomics it is it is some quality stuff uh and uh it's basically a stable swap on avalanche that you if you own the ptp token that it get gives you an apr boost on your stable coins and the longer you hold the token and lock it uh similar to like curve uh the higher the apr boost you get and the ma it maxes out at like 300 days i believe um and so if you hold it 300 days you get the absolute max stable uh boost apr and so Definitely like some Ponzi nomics going on over here where they're trying to make people hold. Uh, you can see the chart. It absolutely exploded a couple days ago uh, and then pulled back. And now it looks like it might be ready to go for a second leg here. Um, but yeah, I mean, wh what do you guys think? Do you think this is something that like is actually sustainable as far as people wanting to hold Platypus so that they get the stable reward boost? It's really high. Like I think if you hold for 300 days, it's like in the hundreds of percent uh, on your stable coin. Yeah, I mean... It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I think, I mean, back to the point about the whole convex model playing out acro across different chains. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of forks that pop up and people replicating that, and that'll probably die out similar to like own forks and crap. But in terms of like the first curve model on a new chain, I think that is still definitely in play and something to look for. Because um, as long as it's from like it's from a legit team, I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't go off. Um, PTP. I think the the economy that can be built around it is a little unique in a sense compared to Curve, um, just because of the multiplier effect. So there could be some DAOs, for example, that pop up where, and I guess you'd have to figure out kind of like the back end of how that would work. But say you're getting the max APR, right? And someone comes in and is like, okay, well, I want to, I have this mega amount of cash and I want to get the APR. Well, that person who has had their token staked for the x amount of time to get that highest multiplier if there's something where you can have like like a trustless like transaction for that where you could swap apr or swap cash for that apr there's a you know you kind of see what i'm getting at there's a whole it's yeah, kind of like like, a new model the 300 iq play would be create a like in what butterfly did with convex and curve for platypus have a bunch of platypus and then basically lock it in your treasury and then potentially, I'd have to think about how this works. Could you potentially do a thing where people can then deposit their stables with you instead of with Platypus and get access to that APR? Like, like you can like stack these on top of each other, essentially. Yeah. Right? That would be an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm sure that probably will happen. Someone will probably try it. In <laughs> fact, it's probably being built already. Uh, mm -hmm. These things happen so fast. But yeah, that would be very uh, interesting. I was going to chime in like real quick. Uh, I think that when it, the trade might start to really maybe peter out or die would be like when the forks start happening. Like I do think so. If we assume that a good L1 will have a robust DeFi ecosystem, then this is probably part of that, right? So like, you know, 
I, I would assume that you know the 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 ones we mentioned on Phantom will probably be long lasting. Well, does does that mean I think everything that forks them will be successful? No. Uh, and the same may or may not be true for Platypus. I'm not going to say these all will do super well, but like you get what I'm saying. Where I, I feel like if there is a good DeFi ecosystem, then this is probably a part of that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and the nice thing for Platypus is it actually has the backing of the Avalanche team. Like they're fully behind it. It's not like somebody they just built it, it over there. They worked on it for three years. Oh, for real? Yeah, this isn't some like overnight yes. thing. Yeah, Luigi yeah. said they worked on it for three years. Yeah, yeah. I, I think mean, the math doc is insane, dude. If you ever just I scrolled through, I was like, holy crap, these, these equations are next level. I'll say this: it does give me early like Ohm vibes as far as like this very new model that people don't understand at all and everybody's going to kind of be like is this a ponzi is this real what is going on here like i definitely get those vibes yeah uh, we think um, we were talking about the other day right the problem what was there to we were looking at their token allocation and i think it, what was it like 40 percent is for initial liquidity or something and then like what happens when that dries up and the aprs aren't as high right now right off the rip that's kind right. of where the issue is going to arise where it's like, okay, people just dump this or is it actually like sustainable? Plus there's the risk of, as you can see on the screen, the fully diluted value is already 2.7 billion. And this thing literally just launched. Like if this thing gets to like 10 billion plus FDV, I mean, at some point, you know, I know FDV can be a meme, but at some point those tokens do get issued and unlocked. And I don't want to be bag holding some protocol when it has like a massive fully diluted value you know that's that's always a risk there and you can see solana ecosystem plays that have kind of been very much evidence of yeah ftv actually does matter like it, it it's one of those it it doesn't matter until it does right and when it does you don't want to be holding the bag yeah it doesn't matter in a bull run then it's exactly not, exactly yeah it's rough yeah. Yeah. um all right i don't want to spend uh too much time on this so uh, let's let's get on i think we uh, covered it well we'll see how it goes it's an interesting experiment i'm but, I'm very interested we have some friends who bought into it so we'll see how it goes for them a hundred a hundred percent you know we'll be keeping our eyes on it uh a hundred percent you know I, I, that when I, the phantom fork drops we're gonna be aping that shit okay we're gonna be first one or in. or the lqdr of avalanche keep your eyes exactly that. okay exactly. okay okay so we covered phantom and it's defi we covered avalanche and the platypus stuff uh, all right, let's get on the let's go to near real quick. Uh, and I know we we've all been actively using the near blockchain and, and Aurora's Aurora, uh, the EVM, as well as near near the blockchain. Um, so um, I'm gonna just start it there. How, what are you guys' thoughts? I'll I'll save mine for last. I'll let Mike go first because Mike is actually the one who uh, got us on to near first. It it's was kind of really bullish on it. Do you have yeah. thoughts, Mike? So. The whole thing with Nier, right? I think right now it's still super early, and then um, from what our friends and we've experienced, there's still some issues that need to be figured out, like the bridging with Rainbow. Like that's obviously a problem. It's not that it needs to be fixed right away, but I think that stuff is short-term problems. The thing that really got me excited about Nier was the fact that in crypto right now, especially with not some not a lot of capital flowing in, narratives are one of the most important things in like picking things to invest in. And Nier has multiple overlapping narratives. Like, okay, for one, you have the ETH 2.0 thing, basically now you have Aurora, which is their L2, which is built built on as, built as a smart smart contract. So you have the L2 narrative. And then you have Ox, which is their parachain, which is L0. So you have all these intersecting things and the tech, if providing the tech is good, which it seems like from their team, it just seems like the obvious play, in my opinion. And then on top of that, they have some interesting um, marketing things coming up that they just brought over the Circle EMO as their CEO. I don't think she's started yet, um, but in terms of adoption, that should be one of the biggest things in terms of like getting more users on board, getting more mainstream. They have some of the best dev tools outside of Solana. So you have that narrative of like, okay, why did Solana do well, right? They had crazy dev tools where like, you could just basically, and you didn't have to learn a brand new language for the most part. You could just basically integrate what you already knew. And if near successful in the long term, like we're talking like years out, 
they could bring all these off-chain code databases onto the near blockchain and a lot and create this environment where you can have collaboration between like let's say like a company wants to build a blockchain on near they could have their whole dev team build on near and collaborate with solidity dev for example um from my understanding that's one of the capabilities and it opens up the possibilities of what can be created as a as a dap pretty much so there's a lot of interesting things and innovative things that are going on there that i think it's worth at that point uh, the other l1s aren't doing i agree i uh I mean, ETH, I mean, sorry, uh, Near is basically what ETH V2 is supposed to be. It's proof of stake with sharding. Now, their sharding mechanism is supposedly, obviously, you know, they say it's better. Of course, they're going to say that. Um, but they have a thing called Nightshade, which I cannot explain. I'm still trying to understand Nightshade, but people can go look up Near Nightshade. And it's basically their, their mechanism um, for how they're doing sharding. Uh, but basically, it's what ETH is supposed to be. But it's already live, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I like Near. I mean, it's interesting listening to the founders. There's actually a great debate between Anatoly from Solana and uh, what's his name from Near? I forget. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't Ilya. It was the other one. I forget who's who's the other co-founder. Oh, I forget his name. Anyways, um, find the link. But anyways, uh. It was this is it was from 2019 I think so way before like Solana or Near were ever like popular and they were both kind of really mu very much in the building phases and uh, they were basically talking about the way Solana's built versus the way Near's built and had like a really good debate and in the uh, discussion basically the Near person said that uh, they are really trying to do a chain for the masses and that he said you need to have basically zero fees if not if not zero like extremely extremely cheap fees that are fast uh and if you don't have that then you're just not going to get mass adoption right and i think people know this but it was like very very much near is trying to be the mass adoption chain and uh that's why they launched aurora which is very interesting because it's not a typical l2 it's a smart contract l2 uh, now there's definitely debate of like the security of this um, and we can maybe get into that a little more. But as far as it goes right now, it's gasless. And in the future, even when there is gas, it'll be extremely cheap. And the way they're doing it is they're trying to pawn off the cost of the transactions onto the DAP providers instead of onto the users. So, for example, like Aave would pay if Aave were on near Aave would pay the the minimal gas fees that there are for the user as a way to get them on the platform and that's kind of the way they're trying to do it in the same way that like the analogy is like okay you use you know twitter or google or whatever you don't pay to do anything on there right google is paying the server fees and all that and they have an economic model that works for that and that's kind of the idea now the argument is like okay what about decentralization right because then you almost are like okay but then you just have like aws all over again in crypto and his argument was, well, these will be essentially DAOs. He called them guilds in the video because it's like two or three years ago before DAOs were really a thing. But basically saying, yes, you will. there will be more centralization in that sense. But instead of you know Google being a corporation, it will now be a DAO. So there's much more decentralized uh, uh, how do you say, accountability in that sense. So that's, that's the theory behind Nier and how they're trying to operate. It's very interesting. It's different from everybody else. And uh, I think it's more of like, we'll see who's right, you know, between Near, Avalanche, ETH, all these guys, right? I, I don't think anybody can truly say what the right answer is. I think everybody's trying their own thing and seeing what works. Yeah, that's the cool thing too on uh, Aurora is um, they don't really, I mean, they have their own token, but what they do on the back end, basically swapping, allowing you to use all these different tokens. And yes, on the back end, cool. they swap it for... Uh, I think it's wrap near mm -hmm. so they're using near um when they they'll be eventually be using near for the gas uh, even though yeah. it's on their l2 so that's really cool like like um, for example so if you get an idea like when i first bridged from eth over there using the rainbow bridge i didn't have any near in my aurora wallet but i was able to pay the gas fee in eth and they just make the swap on the back end which is really cool yeah yeah okay you guys covered a lot of good stuff about near uh 
pretty much most of the things I want to talk about. Although you didn't cover some of the bad things. So all right. Hey, 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 hey. We, we we start with a positive vibe. And then we get into the fact that Aurora was down yesterday when I was trying to make <laughs> a swap and I couldn't do it. Okay, that, we'll get to that part next, all right? I, I uh, yeah, I, since I don't want to spend uh, an ungodly amount of time on Nier, although I am a fan, to be clear, I like Nier a lot. Uh, and uh, great team, great tech, I like what's going on. Uh, and it basically is what ETH2 is trying to be, as David mentioned. But uh, here's my quick Jackson access list I, I put together when when we were all chatting okay web 2-esque slash good decent ui could use a little kinks but like honestly uh and we'll, we'll discuss this in a sec getting onto the near wallet not a good experience once you're on it actually pretty smooth and it looks nice honestly probably better than metamask you know it's a real site and it's pretty or whatever uh okay so you can you can tell the ui with the ui that these guys have web experience um, okay. Uh, uh, the next thing, you know, obviously, you know, the narrative, um, Ilya and the other founders, you know, seem brilliant, um, good VCs behind it and an eco fund. Although I will say the eco fund, we are, we're, we heard that it, it was basically built up from the ground up from the dragonfly guys, not near itself, which is a little weird. Uh, so I don't know, take that for what you will. Uh, L2s, and then, yeah, sharded POS. So um, those are good things. Um, some bad things, though, kind of not a ton to do right now, not borrowing and lending yet, although that will come soon on uh, Burrow is the app that will be the borrowing lending platform, but that's going to be on Near, not Aurora, noteworthy. Uh, so not a ton to do right now, uh, and with that, there's low liquidity, if you guys haven't noticed. Uh, Near Wallet. I don't know if anyone else has not had to do this. I think Mike has been the only one of our friend group who didn't have to do this. But otherwise, we've all had to send 0.1 near to one another to activate our wallets. And it's not a, oh, we just did this. It's like, a, you had to do it. Like, there were no alternatives. So They have you, this deposit thing where you, it doesn't charge you, but you need to deposit 0.1 near uh, to, like, seed a wallet, basically. Um I think it's supposed to give you that. But like for Mike, like Mike, you never had to like get near from somebody else, right? Well, I've set up three wallets now. The first time I used uh, MoonPay and um, depending on your bank, it's like, okay, hit or miss. Mm -hmm. I think that'll flesh it. So I think long-term that's a really good idea, especially if they're targeting normies. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just have to send it from an exchange, like you from KuCoin or whatever, uh, in a little bit. I didn't really have any problems, but it sounds like you guys have had. So, um, yeah, they just need to flush to figure it, that out. I didn't have it's problems. Not, it's it was not just intuitive. That... It's not intuitive. Yeah, but the whole it, that's the whole thing with the moon pay thing, you know? It's like you can just pay fund it with your debit it is, card. It's like a good idea. It is true. In theory. You know what moon pay should do more than uh, marketing and buying people board apes is they should make partnerships with some banks because I use Chase and I can't use MoonPay. It won't let me. I've tried twice. It rejected me both times. Uh, so maybe they should work on that. And then uh, yeah. buying Post Malone more board, ape, board apes, but yeah, that's just you know my opinion. Maybe make a functioning product. Um. Okay. Uh. So okay. Near wallet. Um, and I say this because I want MoonPay to work. By the way, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm like, hey, can you like make it work? Thank one you. One other qualm we've we've seen, and this it's weird because it's actually not even a qualm. But when you see it, you'll be like, oh, it's like when you go in to click an app on when you're using Near itself, it'll be like, hey. Uh, we're going to ask you to reserve 0.25 near to enter this app. And I've, you know, we all, we all have done this at this point and it, it doesn't even, it doesn't even take your money. It's just like, it's basic. I don't even know what the hell it is. It's literally it's just, not a fee. It's like they need it to seed the wallet, I believe is what is necessary. Uh, I don't know the exact mechanism, but yeah. Also not intuitive throws people off we've had multiple friends be like hey what the hell is this you know and of course yeah, it's true. weird it's weird so just wanted to bring that up uh 16 hours back from the rainbow wallet uh from aurora to eth not good uh although synapse has helped fix that god bless synapse uh we like the bridge synapse good bridge we like we, synapse we like the bridge uh low liquidity i brought up and then i'll just say it might be overvalued my personal opinion 
This is personal, not financial advice, blah, 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 whatever. Dylan, markets are future looking. They are betting on the future of near, not the okay. current established near. All right. All right, Kathy Wood. I got it. Uh, <laughs> 12, near is 12 billion at the moment. Polygon is around 17 last I checked. Avalanche is 21, 22. You know, I'll let you just do with that what you will. Uh, I don't think it, it can go, it can certainly go a lot higher. We know that. We know crypto is crazy and, you know, certainly chains that are, uh, how, how should I say, less developed than near. There's a, there's a certain are, chain that we're going to talk about in a minute that it has a much higher valuation than near. It's true. And, uh, so we could, near could go, uh, near could reach, uh, you know, Solana levels. Who's to say? But I personally don't believe in its current state it is worth the value of Avalanche. To be honest, probably a good bit of ways. So... You know, that certainly guides how I have been navigating the trade. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. I, I think Nero's got a bright future, though. I really do. I'm impressed overall with what I've seen. It got some kinks. We, we're using a lot of EVMs right now. I think we all could, could agree. I think almost every single one of these chains has kinks. Maybe except one or two. Uh, but right now, it's, uh, it's rough around the edges. So you No, know, someone sounds like a hater right now, okay? And we don't have time for haters I'm not on this podcast. I just said, I'm, I think nier has got a very bright future. I love the founders. I love the tech. I think the UI is overall good. Hey, I, you know, I like that they're basically ETH too as well. So, dude, nier has got the thumbs up for me, long term especially. Uh, and momentum wise. But uh, I, I think it, uh, you know. No, I agree. I mean, needs, we a, little got, needs a little work. We got, I believe Sushi is working on coming over. And uh, I believe Curve is too. Um, now they've also got their own native type of curve, which is Rose, not Oasis Rose, the L1, a separate thing. It's called Rose, um, that they're building out their own, like, uh, curve style stable swap thing. So obviously people are building on there. We'll see how it goes. It's like everything, you know, see how the ecosystem develops for the next few months. I think I I'm willing to bet that the ecosystem gains a lot of traction, uh, over like Q1 going into Q2. Uh, but again, you know. We'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, also, I I can't remember if Mike mentioned this or not, but uh, the fact that um they use Rust, Solidity, and Go Golong, I believe Golong, right? What's it? Uh, Golang. <laughs> yeah. Golang. Yeah. Uh, big plus. You know, great. It, it, and I've heard other people talk about the uh, how it's a very positive environment for developers, as well as just a lot more traction too. You can go look that up. But there's a uh, uh a huge swath of developers going to near uh, in the recent features or in the recent. Not six so, okay uh moving on let's get to we got just a little bit more on the l1 topic and then we'll go to our next one which will be l zeros um but uh harmony let's just cut make this short and sweet the, the DeFi kingdoms chain that's the so we should call it it's we, literally we, i mean it's literally the DeFi kingdoms we, chain. we are all hilarious. we are all DeFi kingdom stands here just to be frank um but uh harmony it's not the greatest user experience, to say the least. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you use DeFi Kingdoms, if you, if you are a Harmony blockchain enthusiast and you use it, you probably know that you can't use it sometimes, <laughs> if not a lot. Uh, and part of that is their RPC issues. Uh, you, know, the, uh, it, I, you know, the chain just doesn't work a good majority of the time. I think I heard something around one in eight transactions doesn't go through on Harmony, so, which sounds about right, given my you know you could also say seven out of eight transactions work that's a you know <laughs> glass half full type of way of looking at it you know what's really fun about harmony is when you're trying to bridge a good amount of money and then the protocol is just down and you're like oh okay cool all right guess uh just have to wait then can't do anything trying to do a significant transaction and just gotta wait cool um, back tomorrow sucks, i've been i have a, i have a hero that's been mining two days and it's, it's i just can't get the, i can't quest like all i want to do is quest or i can't do it on harmony why is it so difficult yeah uh avax uh sub or er, <laughs> sub chain subnet please save us uh anyways but uh you think that's gonna happen i think i think it's gonna happen right they've kind of oh, hinted that the dfk subnet's gonna happen on avax right they haven't officially said it but sounds like it's gonna happen 
probably uh, i think avalanche is like going hard on dfk like partnership because they know like hey if we get these guys over here they're gonna be a lot of users a lot of money so i think i think they're gonna make it happen uh, i do too i do too yeah we'll see uh so yeah uh I don't know what else to really say. I mean, they they're getting stuff. They're yeah, Ave is coming. They've got a uh, they've got a hundred finance, which is a really exciting new lending or stablecoin platform and stuff uh, across a few different platforms. They've got uh, Tranquil Finance, which is their new lending platform. Uh, but in general, I mean, user experience. What can you say? It can't, it's not good right now. It's it's far from good. You need to use the Pact network if anyone is familiar with that, uh, which Ansem has shilled. Uh, on Twitter before, but or has you know talked about, and um, you basically need to use that to use Harmony a good bit of the time. So uh, a lot of issues. I've heard they are uh, trying to kind of be the the gaming chain, or you know, the, uh, you know, I guess aiming that direction. Yeah, like one uh, of their main things is they're trying to be super interoperable, but you know that's cool, but it also needs to work consistently. So. I don't think any of that matters if it's just not a reliable network. Well, if it, they're trying to be gaming chain, I feel like it might be, it might make more sense for Parachain, like Adam Ox, to kind of take that role. Um, which I mean, it's, I mean, it's a cool idea that they have, but it's like not the most conducive thing, especially if you want to change, make changes, and don't want to operate on the what the L1 is going by. So. All right. Do you have anything else to say uh, about Harmony? I don't. Really I will honestly. say it's it's in the phone narrative. We know crypto is all about narratives right now, so it's got that. I'll going say for it, it has pumped. Hey, the Jewel One pool has done me very well, but as far as the actual protocol, um, yeah, it's 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 underwhelming in terms of using it, but uh, it's still got you know a, a good bit of run up potential. And hey, who's to say they can't make it work? It maybe maybe it'll maybe it'll be a lot better in a few few months. I don't want to rule it out. Uh, so we, we all know these chains are working things out. So, okay. Uh, last thing on our ones, we won't even talk about this, but, uh, secret metas fuse and, uh, Rose. These are clearly, you know, potential new rotations. Uh, you know, we, we won't, we won't get too into it. I think we might save some of these for another episode. Secrets probably one we we want to get into more i know some of us are interested in that secret i really like uh i need rose. to play around with it more i bridged to oasis this week oasis rose just serving us to rose the token Oasis the protocol uh at david's bridged already i've bridged was... to metis full disclosure I'm, I'm a metis holder now uh metis has uh got the thumbs up for me I'll, I'll talk about that more in in the future near future and then we don't know a ton about fuse Fuse is like a, it's like a cello. I, I, I looked into it a little. It's like a uh, mobile first, uh, you know, sort of uh, payments network, L1, uh, blah, 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 cello ask. So uh, there's your little Fuse spiel. But all right, uh, those are potential rotations or next we'll moves. cover those in other episodes probably as yeah. they uh, develop more. Put your finger on those ones. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's do L0s. Okay, so Mike. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. We forgot one very important L1, sir. Oh, I am sorry, good <laughs> sir. I am Most sorry. important. We left the best for last, sir. Yeah, Do not on. forget. Hold on, hold on. Drum roll, drum roll. Look at him with his Cardano. Drumsticks. Cardano, baby. Charles Hoskinson. Chad of all Chads. There's they cool have drumsticks. a Dex now. They have an ecosystem, supposedly takes about three to five days to process a transaction they don't go hey they, hey, hey you don't find it cardano not... doesn't measure the transactions per second they measured in transactions per day okay that's that's the current state of cardano but you know there are a lot of cardano holders out there there's a lot of other youtubers who will talk a fuck ton about I... cardano and shill the hell out of it and i think everybody knows there's a good chance I might see a little pumperino on some of these coins. Um, thoughts? Uh, yeah. Um, to be honest, it, you you can't ignore uh, the facts. I uh, I actually saw um, that the developers on Cardano have increased a shit ton uh, in the past uh, 
uh, in, in 2021, they, they had a lot of developer activity. Um, so um, with that, you know, that means things will, you know, things are happening, right? So um, yeah, no, the um, Sunday swap, their DAX is coming out on Thursday. Uh, and uh, might be pronouncing this wrong, but Moosely Swap is uh, currently out, which is uh, their other DAX. And you can go uh, go to our favorite DeFi analytics site, which is DeFi Llama, and go check out uh, you know the TVL and everything there. Uh, just starting now, I think there's uh, I think there's only three million, uh, three point two ish. So um, just starting to move in groove. But I mean, hey, we, we're not a uh, we're no maxis here. We're non biased. We lo- we like the chains that we we can do stuff on and that the other people like. Well, uh, do stuff on is a key point. Uh, we'll see. I I believe they're already having a little bit of a uh, congestion issues on Cardano as far as transactions getting through. But um, I mean, that that does make me a little nervous. So that's the only thing. Like, I do think there's like the very zero IQ left bell curve play of like, all right, a bunch of normies are like bag holders of Cardano. They've had absolutely nothing they could do for literally years on Cardano. And now there's an ecosystem. Some of it's probably going to pump. But the only thing that scares me is like, I, I don't trust the chain at all. And it's already tough, like having like Harmony go down when I have like a lot of money over there on DeFi Kingdoms. And it's not fun to do that again with like Cardano. Um, I don't know. That's the only thing that's like hey, my Cardano hesitation. Cardano hasn't gone down yet, sir. I don't think it's gone down, but it's been really slow, dude. And, and that's with like barely anybody on it yet. If we fast forward a that's week. That's priced in, bro. It's the full yeah, narrative. It's yeah, it's priced right, in. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like. I don't know, man. I mean, okay. I, I'm not going to fade it. I'm not going to tell anybody to fade it, but that is the only thing that scares me a little bit. It's like, oh, do I want to have a lot of money over there? I don't know. Well, what's the yeah. deal with the, the, so what's the deal with the near partnership or integration? Yeah. Okay. Our, our you, Donna, you mentioned this. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't read it. I just know they have some sort of deal. Do you know about it? Ardana, it's a stable coin product on there. So I, I, intuition tells me it'd be like their curve. I haven't done a lot of research. <laughs> Shocker. But uh, I so we're here for folks a podcast where we don't do research. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I was referring to the Cardano ecosystem. I'm I know, sorry. I know. Sorry, I <laughs> am the researcher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, this is the I am the researcher. Okay. Anyways, what I was gonna say was uh, <laughs> um, uh, Ardana is uh, is on the uh, portfolio of the Almighty Three Arrows Capital. So uh, I mean, you know, yeah, those guys the... aren't dummies. They, I don't think They're... they would invest on that by accident. No, okay, I've got the uh, site up here. There's the first all-in-one stablecoin ecosystem built on Cardano. Um, okay. Cardano like is like almost 2x capacity. Well, it bottomed out at like 112, and now it's at 160-ish, right? Got oh, over 170 50, last time 50%. I looked. 50%. Cardano's up right 114% now. this week. Card stars up 98%. Oh, Cardano. Oh, yeah. Ar- Ardana. Oh, yeah, I got Ardana. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, they're up 114%. So, anyways, I don't think we have a whole lot to say other than, hey. It, it's happening, and the ecosystem. Do it at your own risk. You know, well, no, but not just, like, you know, it, it could be a play. And uh, it, we, it we 100% actually... could. Like, like I said, like, probably will. Like, there's, you probably should, like, financial advice. You probably should give it a little dabble. Just check it out. But. Personally, I'm a little nervous about putting money there, but I'll probably, you know, I'm a degenerate, so I'll do it anyways. But, you know, it does make me a little nervous. I, I'll bring this up. Uh, I, you know, uh, you'll probably hear us talk, actually, especially our next podcast, you'll hear us talk a lot more about game theory. And uh, I brought this up earlier where you have this dynamic of all these people on crypto Twitter who are, A, they hate Cardano. Everyone makes fun of it all the time. And two, they'll probably be slower to respond to it slash brush it off easily or slower to react to it, which potentially gives you more of a chance and an opportunity to front run. So I uh, just wanted to bring that aspect up too. Where, you know, uh, yeah, dude, develop- crypto is weird, man, because we're on crypto Twitter. So we get that ecosystem, which I would say is, you know, probably the most like, I'm not saying there's not a bunch of dummies on there, but it's the most advanced, I would say, like in the no ecosystem. But outside of crypto Twitter, there is a massive amount of people like on YouTube and Reddit and all that. Like I will occasionally go back to the 
r slash cryptocurrency reddit and it is it is garbage but anyways you know i used to go there in like 2017 back in the day and uh people do people talk about cardano there and like a lot of stuff that nobody talks about on on crypto twitter uh they have their own like communities so just because in your bubble people don't talk about it you shouldn't fade something i think that's definitely a lesson a lot of us have learned this year like me with phantom like we were talking earlier like i really wasn't paying much to phantom uh early on and then it was only because like you dylan were like oh look at this look at this look at this i was like okay let me pay more attention now right it was just something that i didn't pay much attention to and i think a lot of other people on crypto twitter didn't and it was like oh there's like a real ecosystem here you know and i think cardano will be the same thing yeah and it's actually last point on this which is just uh you bring up a great point of like the different ecosystems and environments and stuff and cardano community is you know love it or hate it, it's a very real one they are outside of crypto twitter in the in a large scheme of things so uh you know um you're not going to see it as much on the timeline maybe but anyways moving on um l zeros l zeros are starting to heat up uh interoperability the nice buzzword infrastructure take a shot uh a uh, um a topic we have been discussing a lot lately um you know there's a lot of cool stuff here actually uh on this topic and we're, we're gonna stick to the l zeros here um but um yeah um it is both catching a narrative as well as appears to be increasingly more important and attractive in a multi-chain world. So uh, I, I have Adam, Dot, and Oct written down a few other things. Um, uh, I forgot to mention Constellation or DAG, which is a potential other L0. I think even Hedera potentially fits in this category. But we're going to mostly stick to those. Those are kind of the popular ones right now or the ones that are getting talked about. Well, maybe less so Dot, but... Uh, yeah, uh, I think we all have some stuff to say about this. So, all right, uh, so, pass, it, pass the mic to somebody else. Mike, you're currently writing thing on Oct and like comparing it to uh, Cosmos and stuff, right? I all think right, we should ahead, start Dylan. with Adam. I, think I was going to say, sorry, like, I think Mike has done the most research out of the three of us on this specific topic. I don't know if you want to take the lead, Mike. Yeah. Um, I think, the, I mean, the more we'll learn about Polkadot, it just seems like, I mean, there's a place for it from my understanding. They're focusing more so on, it seems like they're kind of focusing on like corporate almost. Like their C, the CEO of Moonbeam was saying how they're not really prioritizing speed. Well, and like, what is what is Moonbeam, Mike, for people who might know? Moonbeam, that is their, um, that's their Ethereum, right? Their EVM. So I'll, I'll explain. Sorry, You're better explaining. I can read stuff and I just can't rehash it well. Uh, yeah, let me explain just to clarify. Sorry. Uh, Moonbeam, which is the thing I have written down about Dot, is uh, if you guys are familiar with Moon River, that's the EVM on Kusama. Uh, Moonbeam is the same thing for Dot. It is their parachain. Wait, side note on Moon River, they have the weirdest like niche community of absolute diehards. I don't know if you've seen this. If you like look up the hashtag Mover, M-O-V-R, like... There's, I think what it is, is there's a lot of bag holders of Moon River and they really want to get a pump on it, like desperately. It's so funny. Anyways, go ahead, sorry. You're, you're good. Uh, so uh, Moonbeam is, is the, the Polkadot equivalent. Uh, Glimmer, G-L-M-R, uh, is their token. And you can actually go check out. There, there is a, a, a you know, newfound DeFi ecosystem on there. Uh, again, you can go check out DeFi Llama for that. Uh, but um, anyway, sorry. Just to clarify, that's Moonbeam EVM. Uh, so that just so that just happens. But anyways, take the, take them like that. Sorry, Mike. No, you're good, man. Thank you for explaining. Um, so their focus, they're, the CEO of Moonbeam basically said, we've drawn comparisons to the computer of like the 70s and 80s, and how focusing on all these L1s focusing on speed is not the play, and they're taking the opposite approach. Um, they're focusing more so on um, their substrate system, like intera being able to interact within their system versus speed. And it's like, if you're if you're talking about UI UX and that's your priority, well, speed and not having your transaction stuck need to be up there. I don't know why he's saying there's this disconnect between them. So, and then you have Adam, which has Evmo, Evmo, Evmos coming soon, and they're doing the wrecked airdrop. 
which should start to and we saw with looks right doing these airdrops that are extremely profitable it's like number it's like one of the best marketing things you can do so it seems like adam's positioning themselves better to kind of take that like multi-chain ethereum kind of like world while polka dot may still have its place more so on the corporate side um say like the example they gave was like say like starbucks wants to create their own blockchain right where it's like the system that they use within their company it's like okay i could see that happening the ethereum stuff it seems like adam's positioning itself better and then you have octopus which is positioning itself really well given the the cost is extremely low um to build one a parachain on their network and they're also positioned well for multi-chain so I don't know. Just if you're just looking from an investment perspective, it seems like Octopus and Atom are the clear play. Polkadot has, seems to have its issues, and um, you know if he pulls a two X, that's great. But the amount of money that needs to flow into the total market is going to need to be extremely high. So it's like the risk reward just not there. It's like there's nothing that I've seen about from Polkadot yet that's been like, oh, like I'm super bullish on this. Like it seems cool, but yeah. you know. The thing that turns me off from Polkadot is that in order to build on Polkadot, you need to like get voted by the entire uh, ecosystem uh, and approved. Like you have to go through a whole governance process just so you can like launch something over there, which is kind of the antithesis of crypto, right? Crypto is like supposed to be open source. Anybody can build, just here's the code, have fun, right? Do your thing. And I really don't like that Polkadot approach. Polkadot, honestly, I'm gonna say some slanderous thing here. Polkadot is the Cardano of l zeros, okay? say ethereum co-founder blah 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 oh really academic smart guy but like it kind of sucks and it's so overvalued in my opinion compared to like uh adam and oct and even just from a pure investment perspective why someone would buy polka dot when it's at a 30 billion valuation versus something like adam which is like i forget where it's at right now it's not gone up a bit but it's like 10 12 or something um or even oct which is way smaller I don't see the risk reward there at all with Polkadot. Um, and, you know, like you said, Mike, they're already worth so much, like this built in expectation, where now that they're starting to deliver, quote unquote, if there's like any type of letdown, that, that shit's going to dump. I mean, it's just going to absolutely dump. Kind of honestly, like we saw with Cardano at its peak, I know it's kind of having a little resurgence now, but back in August, it was, did it, it hit $3, right? I think it was a little over $3 temporarily. And uh, yeah. they launched smart contracts and oh my God. And then that was the literal top, right? It's like, oh, they actually have a product now? Oh, send it to zero, right? Like that's mm -hmm. literally what happened. And I think that's what's going to happen with Polkadot. Unless something changes, I think that's going to be the fate. I'm much more bullish on Cosmos and Oct personally. Yeah. The thing too is uh, the auction model they use, Polkadot, it's like, oh, you can build Oh, your... this is, yeah. Explain how this works because this is mind blowing. Yeah. So to my understanding, so the, that's where the use of the polka dot coin comes into play where it's like if you want to so you say you have a parachain and you build so you build out this whole ecosystem right you have a successful parachain it has to go up for re-auction i think it's every two years i want to say maybe a year and then everyone else can re-bid on it in an auction format so you can lose your parachain spot like why would you like, out of all the other l zeros like why would you choose to put yourself in that situation just it's expensive as hell to do that especially if some big per, like big organization comes in and wants to outbid you for your spot it's like i agree um yeah i will uh not shit like talk about by any means because i mostly largely agree with all this I, I i will say one thing that we have seen that like with an oversaturation of projects with an oversaturation of scams so it will probably result in higher quality uh, projects like uh, I know like Algorand is I guess trying to take this sort of approach where they're not building a bunch of stuff but they're building a small amount of high quality projects is their I guess you know the, the I guess the shill for that right so uh, I just want to throw that out there on the flip side of the coin you know yeah. it's maybe not all bad I'm not saying there should be zero quality control I do agree but I think you know, I just think, I mean, look, crypto moves so fucking fast. I mean, we see it all the time. It's like yeah. you need to have people be able to build and not need permission to do everything, right? It's, it's pays permission. Pays the shit. Lit. 
pays to right? ship yeah. in this industry. You need to ship shit, you know? And you don't even know. Like, you could have some, a lot of times, like, really good ideas sound completely batshit crazy stupid in the beginning. <clears throat> and so if the whole, you know, eco DAO or whatever votes, oh, no, that sounds crazy. We're not going to let that be built. And then they go build it on Cosmos. And now it ended up working because you didn't have the foresight that, oh, this new crazy idea could work, right? So that's where I think Polkadot has its failings. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Any other thoughts on L zeros? Um, uh, Adam, we didn't really get into Adam much. Um, okay. Who wants to take the lead? You want to go for that? Uh, yeah, I can talk about it a bit. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, Adam certainly catching the narrative fits in the the phone acronym. Uh, and um, you know, honestly, you know, in terms of activity, there actually is stuff to do. The Kepler wallet uh, it appears to have a, a great UI. Uh. You I do like reward. the Kepler wallet. It's very nice. Very you easy. Get, you get rewards over there. Osmosis is Dex slash blockchain over there that uh, you know you can get some juicy yields on. Last I checked, it's been a bit, but uh, uh, Osmo. We talked about Secret earlier as an L one. We and, should mention uh, very importantly Pseudo. that Luna and Binance Smart Chain are both built on top of Cosmos, so they've very much proven like, hey, we are legitimate. You can build very large things on top of it that scale. And so that's like a very, and, and yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> crypto.com's thing, Crow, which we'll see if that pops off. It kind of died off a bit. But anyways, yeah, the point is like, hey, it's worked, right? They have real stuff that's actually built on it and has proven that they can build things, right? No, true. Uh, good good point. Uh, and good good luck to bring up Crow, Mike. <laughs> True. I forgot uh, about Crow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I did too. I did too. Uh, Ju Judo uh, is the other coin that people have been bringing up there. Uh, but uh, oh, Iris is another one. Uh, if you don't watch Noah Seedman, uh, you should check him out. He's he's some hidden alpha in the uh, YouTube streets, but he's a Noah Iris. Seedman is the most underrated YouTuber. I will say this right now. Okay, it, it is true. Cri Crypto Messiah is also a big fan. Uh, Interesting. Anyways. So, uh, Noah. yeah, we like, we, we stay on the nose around here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all that being said, you know, uh, interoperability, hot topic, kind of a buzzword, but, you know, definitely something that we will be needing, uh, as we're seeing, especially in these, like, you know, bridging to all these other ecosystems. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, um, Adam seems to have a lot of promise. Uh, also worth mentioning, uh, speaking of, we stand, uh, Tetranode mentioned, uh, he said his, Favorite uh, non EVM or Ethereum chain, excuse me, was Cosmo. If I, if I quote him correctly. Uh, so I uh, just want to throw that out there too. But, anyways, people seem to like this, uh, the, the idea of it all. And um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, point being, uh, you know, these I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a good year. Uh, maybe not Polkadot. Uh, I don't want to speculate too. Yeah. But probably these will have a good year. I'm excited for Evmos, not just because I'm getting the airdrop and I hope it's worth a lot, but uh, also because, uh, you know, it's an EVM over on Cosmos and let's see a lot of users come over. If they do it right, I think they will onboard a lot of people. Yeah, the thing, uh, if I'm not mistaken, so IBC, so with that launching, that's going to enable non-EVM chains to interact with Ethereum-based, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's huge. Um, yeah. Anything else on uh, Adam Cosmos? Pretty much okay. covered it. Yeah, not uh, a lot um, of Giga Brains over there too. That's that's the other thing I would say. Yeah, and they've been building this people. thing for four more years now. So it's not like like they've they've done it right. I'll say that. Like they very much extremely meticulous with how they're building it and i think they're doing it right um yeah there's a lot of ecosystem plays over there that i think are going to pop off that we haven't talked about there's too many to get into oh. maybe we might even do a separate episode and maybe specifically yeah. on like a lot of eco plays you know what i'll mention this too I, I threw it out there in the beginning but uh constellation dag they uh uh they're another l0 and uh, actually they had a recent announcement that they're going to be working with synapse um so uh they have a strategic partnership with synapse so Partnerships rather vague sometimes in crypto. Right. Not sure what that means. Uh, they're they're going to be discussing it this Wednesday, so just two days from now. I might I might be tuning into that. See what's up. They strategically make their coin go up. That would be cool. Um, 
<laughs> so point being, uh, you know, that uh, just just throwing that out there, maybe a you know, tidbit of alpha uh, hiding in there. But anyways, uh, moving on, our last topic for the first episode of the DeFi Mafia podcast. Uh, David Gill, our our favorite our favorite thing, uh, or or uh, your favorite project, Ohm, and uh, I have Ohm. Danny slash really time and Wonderland and Redacted. Mostly we'll cover the first two, but uh, there's a few things to talk about here. So, uh, David, honestly, you want to just do you want to just take this one, buddy? Oh, I will plug before we get into it. Uh, let, we won't go too deep onto it because I'm going to have a full episode coming uh, either this week or next week with Jordy Alexander, who uh, has been gracious enough to agree to do an interview he wrote the uh article that a lot of people have been sharing i went came out on saturday uh basically talking about uh ohm and how he thinks it's a ponzi and uh basically it got shared around a lot and it's a very it's a it's a well-written article i agree with a lot of it um i think one of the biggest problems for olympus and honestly a lot of the own forks is the communication of how it works because um, it's not super intuitive, um, and it took even me some time to really understand it, um, even though, you know, I've known about Ohm for a long time. Um, but yeah, so we'll, I'll go really in depth with him on like all the mechanics of Ohm, how these things work, why I personally, yes, call me stupid, call me crazy. I still think Ohm is going to be one of the top 10 projects one day. I fully stand by that. Nothing has changed. The price has gone down. It hurts, but fundamentally, there is nothing has changed. In fact, again, you, I'm going to sound like a, a uh, an idiot, but uh, the developments they have made over the last couple months have made me even more bullish long term on them, uh, despite the price drop. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, I don't. I think everybody knows at this point, Ohm dumped, and all the Ohm forks dumped, time dumped. A lot of it was due to liquidation cascades, uh, because people like to nine nine which is borrow against their ohm to buy more ohm. I think, uh, so I listened to the ohm. They had a community call today in their Discord, and I listened to it. And uh, Zeus talked about how they're actually talking to Tetranode uh, to modify the loan-to-value ratio in the fuse pools where people are borrowing at 70% right now, I think. Oh, I, which is insane. I, that's If you're borrowing 70% against your ohm, you're, you're fucking crazy. Um, Could you I've never imagine? Done, you're a wick I've, away. The, the thing with the 9.9, and I, I tweeted this today, it was like, first of all, we've had so many liquidations. I think at this point, the market is going to adjust and not such degenerates. But also, I think there's a lot of people who never have leverage traded before that because this is, doesn't seem like leverage trading in the traditional sense of, oh, just press, you know, fucking 20x long. Uh, but it is, right? You're borrowing against and you have a liquidation threshold. And a lot of people who have never leverage traded before got their asses liquidated and learned a very hard lesson and so hopefully a lot of people in DeFi who don't do traditional trading kind of uh got a little taste of that leverage liquidation medicine and uh will learn from it same thing with time uh they had actually today so yesterday was we're recording this on monday uh martin luther king day and uh so sunday ohm had its liquidation and today time had a liquidation where it went down to like 800 bucks or something um well and actually so i can actually touch on this a bit which uh i think is funny and you, you touched on how like a lot of people just don't understand these things which i think really does it's basically snowball and uh result in you know a lot of selling off and fud and blah 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 people just not knowing what's going on but uh with that time today uh so danny private previously had more or less declared war on trader joe uh we won't cover it but he kind of did that a few weeks back um they were giving out more um apy to the usdc pools and the min pools it really i guess kind of triggered him and with his takeover of sushi swap he then uh decided to migrate liquidity from trader joe to sushi and uh if you didn't know well half of joe's liquidity was times uh treasury uh at least a few weeks ago last i last i checked and uh time was moving their their liquidity and so basically what you have a what what happens here is time is moving a bunch of liquidity off of trader jail you have a and that negatively affects the price you have a bunch of people who don't even understand or know this 
and they're now selling their time into this less liquid pool on Trader Joe, and it's further spiraling the time down. And uh, yeah, it's just a snowball of like out of control mess. So uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to throw that in there too. It's it's just like uh, it's a whole slew of problems there, but. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what, my, what to say with these. these my are... thing, my thing with time and the reason. So I sold my time a while ago. I did actually make money on time, and uh, it was because the APY is just too high. They never lowered it, right? Like Ohm is lowering right now to a thousand percent APY, um, and the reason that's important is because the APY comes from the dilution, right? It comes from the bonding. And so basically when you see a high APY, what that means is what percent is the supply getting diluted over time, or I guess in this case, increased over time. And so in the beginning, you can do a really high APY because the treasury is really small, market cap's really small. But as you get big, as time did and Ohm did, uh, you need to lower that APY over time because basically, and I'm going to probably write a full article on how I kind of value and see these uh, tokens as far as like um, like a methodology for valuing them. And one of the basic methodologies is non-dilutive treasury growth, meaning treasury growth that does not come from basically bonds selling more shares or selling more tokens in this case, and instead comes from some type of revenue or whatever fee generation divided by the APY. And so in the case of time, the reason I sold is because like they still had whatever, 70,000% APY after the treasury got to like $800 million. So what that means is that if you play that over a year, time would need to increase the treasury from 800 million, multiply that by 700x, which would be 70,000% in order to sustain that APY. And that's obviously not going to happen. It's just not possible. And so Ohm, obviously, you know, that's what they're doing and they're decreasing the APY over time. Time never did that. So that's why I sold. And I kind of was like, yeah, I mean, obviously it's going to keep going down until they do this. Now, they said they're just going to ditch the uh, 3 3 model altogether, which is interesting. He did mention that they're going to do some type of V uh, model, like voting locked model. And that has been proposed with Ohm, uh, where like if you, there's going to be, there could be regular staking and then like locked staking. Um, it's not anything that's been passed or like official, but there's been discussion of it. I'm not sure if it'll happen or not, uh, but that could be interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I'll have a full long podcast with Jordy, um, hopefully this week or next week, talking about all the mechanics and we'll really dive deep. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Any thoughts for you guys? Uh, let's check the price of Redacted. Real quick. I don't feel like this guy. Oh, what did he say? Did you see Hayden this? Did you see this? <laughs> Disgusting. A long time supporter. Just over read it 2, out. Read it out loud. loud. Read it out loud. Wow. Can you click on it and make it bigger? Daniele, been a long time frog supporter. I just lost over 2,000 time. Ouch. And my liquidation price was below the backing price. Having over $10 million of time a few weeks ago and now down to 9.5 million after hitting lick price just two hours ago in that Abra liquidity sell-off. Really insanely hard to take. Down 9.5 million. Not down. Okay, I was like, I got confused <laughs> for a second there. That makes sense. So he lost basically, he had he was sitting on 10 million and lost it because he got licked. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, man. People don't realize that the treasury backing does not mean that the price cannot go below it. That's... Yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, exactly. Like, it will obviously, if it goes below treasury, it's going to adjust at some point because the market will be like, oh, it's below the treasury. People are going to buy it. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't temporarily get a wick down there, which is exactly what happened in this case. Time went to like 800 bucks. I think it's back to like 12 or 1300 now at the time of recording. And it, you kind of see these bounces all the time with like Ohm and, and time when they get these liquidation cascades. But yeah, I mean, we have tough, a man. Like I said, cartels. people who have never leverage traded Again, a nice little dose of what it's like to leverage trade. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't use these uh, rebase tokens as collateral, folks. I don't think you're going to have a good track record with that one. But, uh, yeah, we have Butterfly clock clocking in at 1,500 as well. So, you know, quite quite the rough few days for these. So. Uh, uh, real quick, just before we leave it, I mean, you know, the sentiment is shit right now. We'll be frank. Like, I mean, sorry, sorry, David, to fucking fund your bags. 
sir. I did, but, you don't need to tell me that, buddy. I'm well uh, aware. But, My favorite thing is that I, I don't know what it is with Ohm versus other tokens because there's plenty of tokens that will like just completely dump, right? We this is crypto. People love, love to shit on Ohm when it goes down. I mean, it is unbelievable. I mean, the whole timeline yesterday was just like, oh, three three now nine five. Oh, like 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 <laughs> every fucking joke, every meme. Everything possible, and uh, hey, that's fine. It's fine with me. It's fine. Uh, I can yeah. I can handle it. But okay, being reason, you know, logical or whatever, and you know, actually thinking this through, you know, you think these we do think these things have a future. Uh, I know, David. You know, you can give your spiel here, but um, how how do we think these perform in a in a year or two years, three years from now? Do you think? I think the majority they, of own forks will fail. And that's well, of course, kind of, of obvious course, obviously. from the beginning. Um, I think Ohm will succeed. And again, what is, I won't... What does succeeding look like? What, tell me, what, what is Ohm in 2023? Um, will they be able to successfully generate significant amounts of revenue based on all of the things that they're trying to do? Um, so some of the things, that, for example, that like make me more bullish is like the redacted launch, for example, right? Like that was their first like sub DAO, so to speak. And that went really well. I know it pulled back today, but it's, you know, it's kind of related to everything. And so that was one that succeeded a lot. And um, I think that they're going to, with Olympus Pro, with their incubation program, they're almost acting like a decentralized VC in some senses. I think that they will be able to generate significant amounts of revenue based on their treasury and utilize the assets in the treasury to become almost this... I mean, they call it the central bank of DeFi, and that's kind of the ultimate goal. And that's what you're betting on when you're buying Ohm. And uh, I think that they have a chance at pulling it off and nothing and the fundamental, like if you take away the price and you look at just like what they've accomplished, uh, they've pretty much hit on most of the things that they said they were to accomplish. Um, so that's basically it, you know. Mike? Yeah, I have way more, um, way more faith in Ohm. I'm just, it just seems like a mess, dude. Like, they're the the whole thing that they were talking about prior with the music festival stuff, like, it's cool, man, but... What, what, the, the, it's time, right? Yeah, time. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, definitely, yeah. I definitely believe in Ohm. I think that what they've accomplished has been... I mean, I, I mean they, they've hit a lot of their goals. The one thing that you touched on that they haven't done as well is um, education of, like, what's actually yeah, going on. Yeah. The communication part is the is the thing they've done the worst, in my opinion. And I'm not trying to throw shade. Like, I, I respect the team a lot. I think the team is brilliant. Um, but I think they do – like, I wrote an article about them, right? And, and a lot of people were like, oh, wow, this was great. I really understand, like, what Olympus is trying to do now. I was like, that's cool, and I'm glad, you know, we got a bunch of, you know, email subscribers from it, but I'm like, why didn't Ohm write this? You know, why didn't Olympus write this article? Why did I write this as, like, an independent person, you know? So that's kind of an example where they need to be better at the marketing communication side. Right. That's a, I mean, that's not a quick fix, but it's a relatively easy one given the amount of money they have. So, um, you know, just, it's just their leadership decides to, some, eat like, a decent marketing team, I think they'll... Uh, do well long term time i've been following the project very closely lately so i can't really speak too much to it but it doesn't seem like uh there's a whole lot going on compared to ohm in terms of like actual planning so i don't know we'll see it's definitely uh definitely more faith than ohm like you said so what do you think dylan yeah um yeah i think ohm has uh, executed on the roadmap better i think time is communicated better and as a result also has a better community uh, I think time is communicated better though. Like, I don't think people understood yeah. the APY. Like, like I the reason I sold was I was like, because I obviously very intimately understand these mechanics because I'm very bullish and I've been like all over this stuff. But like, was, that's why I sold. I was like, oh, they're not gonna lower the APY. Okay, so this is just gonna get diluted forever. All to right, be honest, I'm like as somebody who, who held time for a while, like I, you know, I haven't been in it for probably over a month or two, a month and a half now. But like. I uh, I was following, obviously I was keeping up, and um, you know you don't see it on Twitter, but yeah, dude, they were they were they were good at updating. You know, uh, they would have very consistent updates in their Discord, and you know, uh, describing what was going on and like the proposals to whatever change the treasury, which people were like fighting on Twitter. But I don't really feel like getting into it. But point being, uh, at, at least when I was actively paying attention, 
I noticed a pretty steady stream of communication, whether it be from Danny or Sifu, the treasury manager. Olympus does a lot of communication. I think that it's just on not on Twitter. And well, that's what, honestly, bro, that's kind of my point. I think Danny just is a, a part of it's like it's just Danny He's tweeting. On Twitter. Yeah, he just more see more people see it. So that's part of it too. Uh, You're right. So, they do have a good community. Way better. In terms yeah. of just like getting like the name or like the word of mouth around it seems like. Yeah. I think but, it helped I mean, too that they run Avalanche. Um or at least initially, obviously Ohm by Geo and Avalanche. But like remember, honestly, it. one of the reasons I did sell was because uh time blew up on TikTok and I was like, Oh, okay, this is probably a top signal. Like I was like, I'm out. Thank you very much. But it why did it blow up on TikTok? Because Avalanche is cheap and you know, telling people when I was buying Ohm in the beginning, dude. I, it would, you know, I had to swap and stake it. It was pretty much consistently two, three hundred bucks in gas fees every time I wanted to do that. Telling a normie that is like that's just not going to do it. So then you have the version on Avalanche, and it's like, oh, okay, a bunch of normies bought time because it's cheap, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely was a big part of that. Starting. Um, but all right, yeah. Um, oh, I think we covered it. So yeah, Jordy interview coming up. Coming in. Uh, we'll go really in depth. I'll do my best, and uh, maybe he'll prove it's a Ponzi to me, and I'll change my mind. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think so, but David we'll see. David Gill selling him. I'll see it when I believe it. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, okay, but uh, okay. Anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully, we weren't too rambly, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys for for our next episode with Jody. So thank you, and uh, stay tuned. Peace. Yeah.